Hey, Rick Maniacs, welcome back to another Friday sit rep. Uh, we got a lot to go over this week, so without further ado, let's head into the design room and see what Brick Mania was up to. All right, time for a Friday stop at the Cabana because we have the BRC40 Bantic, which comes with this uh, minifigure and perfect caliber. A nice little, uh, a, a smaller kit for you, Dan, considering what you've been working on here recently. <laughs> oh, absolutely. This is this is the BRC40. This is this is so the BRC40 is the original Jeep. So back in, in, in like 1940, when it was apparent that the world was headed towards war, the government put out a, a call for like, hey, we need a scout car. It has to be up, you know, a quarter ton. It has mm -hmm. to be able to do all this, these things. So a bunch of companies put in submissions for Willys, um, you know, had their own in their own right. The, the, the BRC60 was Bantam's uh, uh, vehicle, and it fulfilled most of the requirements. It was actually the best vehicle of all the, all the submissions. Mm -hmm. Bantam, Bantam Cars being a small company that basically at, up to that point were, were doing um, small runs of domestic runs of, of European cars um, out of New York uh, actually, I think Pennsylvania. Okay, and they were also they were also involved in like the, the yellow cab company, so the famous yellow taxi cabs. Mm -hmm. that, that was those are actually made by the yellow cab company. Oh, cool! <laughs> and Bantam was involved in that, so that they teamed up. They incorporated some of the things that that were in some of the cars that they were producing. Made this four by four uh, vehicle that would basically become the pattern of the Jeep. The it won all the competitions. Um, for production, it was the best of the submissions. The government basically told Ford and Willys, "Hey, take all these things from the Bantam car, <laughs> right. incorporate it into your vehicles." Um, Bantam had some disadvantages. They were a small company. Right. All the components that were in the Bantam car were like off-the-shelf components. So they would just basically buy them from parts suppliers, mm -hmm. put together, bolt together this car, and they had came up with this really this what would become a war-winning design. Sure. Um, of the Bantam, they only. They, they were made in small numbers at the beginning uh, when it became apparent that, okay, war is going to be happening. Uh, the government basically pulled the permits and said, hey, we own this design. Bantam was too small to argue about it, so they lost the design. They were given The design was given over to Ford and Willys, who kind of used their own bigger base of, of production, production, mass production. Yeah, right. Changed a lot of things, simplified. Like the headlights on the original Bantam were actually part of the fender. Mm -hmm. um, in the Ford the Ford and the Willys version, they simplified that. They made a stamped grill. Um, things that like Ford had, like big stamping machines that, that, that Bantam didn't have access sure. to. So they'd simplify a lot of stuff. But all the main the main layout, the the, the four by four, everything, every aspect of this vehicle uh, of the Jeep is is found in here. Um, some things that noticeable differences oops, um, would be this squared off mm -hmm. fender. That's 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 really typical. I mean, that's that was the Bantam style. The Bantam version had this grill. It didn't have like a, a stamped metal uh, front plate on it. Instead, it had bars. Mm -hmm. um, so you have this different sort of grill shape than the the, the actual later you know, fancy Jeeps. The fold down windshield, all that. That's that's all Bantam. Very so, very cool. So when. Ford and Willie started ramping up their production. The mm -hmm. government actually rounded up all of the scout cars that had, the BRCs that had been distributed to the to the U.S. military, and sent them overseas and lent these programs. Which is why the Russians were such a huge fan of it, and why we are releasing it for Red October. Right. So this is actually the the Russians. They they love this. They when when they started getting the later Jeeps and the Ford Jeeps and the Willys Jeeps, they're like, oh, they're not nearly as good as the the Bantam car. And they called it the Bantic because it was a little bit more heavy duty, had a better power to weight ratio mm -hmm. than the than the later Jeeps. Which, you know, the Jeep itself, the, the what we would consider the ubiquitous Jeep, the Ford or the Willys versions, those are like great vehicles. They have great, great. power to weight ratio. Uh, Enzio uh, Ferrari, the the guy who owns Ferrari, mm -hmm. the famous famous maker of the Ferraris, he actually called the Jeep the only American uh, sports car ever made. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's basically what it was. It had a great power to weight ratio. Uh, and, you know, it was a fast little vehicle. It happened to be a 4x4. So. Very, very cool. So let's pull this guy out of here. Lots of history behind here. Yeah, we're going to have Landon go over him uh, a oh, little okay. bit later in the sit rep because definitely with that perfect caliber Papa Shaw, that Woo! is a... Uh, and there an essential part of it. Don't <laughs> worry, we'll have it. Uh, we'll have it on set a little bit later. But Dan, thank you very much for talking me through the Bantic. I, uh, I'm destroying my own. Do, do some repair work there. <laughs> yeah, let's put that windshield back up. Oh, one other thing to note: so the Jeeps, the later Jeeps, had two windshield wipers from the top. The Just Bantam the one. Has the one on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Just take care of the driver, I suppose. Huh? Yeah, that's all you need. It's a th it's three it's a three person vehicle. Mm -hmm. It was designed to carry three people. So you have one guy sitting in the middle in the back and the two the two bucket seats kind of up front. So. Very, very cool. Now available at BrickMedia.com. Thank you very much, Dan. All right.
Okay, and for our last stop, it's kind of a, a significant one down here in the design room, and that is because this is the first crack at Lando's Rando. So the way it works is for every, uh, uh, or for, when you spend $100, you get a free one, um, and it's limit one per customer right now because this is kind of the unofficial Rando's pregame uh, as we work up to the, the drop of the 2020 Horde. But we wanted to get, uh, get some of them out there so that people could uh, start getting their hands on some of the new stuff, especially all these cool 3D printed elements, uh, brick arms, etc. So this is uh, this is becoming quite the horde here, Landon. Yes. What do you um, think? I guess for those of you not familiar with the Lando's Randos, these are all just like test prints. These are misprints, um, and it's just start, stuff that started kind of accumulating on my desk around the printers, um, and it, I was just having fun making some goofy or random com uh, exactly. combinations with it, and you know I'd have people stop by like, oh, those are cool, like. Uh, where can, can we get these or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I guess eventually we had enough where, hey, we can we can uh, make this go live. We can actually make these available to people who want them. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they're for the fans. Uh, you know, it's 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 not for everybody, right? It, yeah, right. Is, it's kind of one of those things where some people buy them because they like to see what cool exclusive items they can get their hands on to mix with other figs. Some people like to leave them together. I'm sure some people play with them. I mean, sure, sure. there's 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 lots of lots of different things you can do. As you can tell from this batch, there's no shortage of cool custom 3D elements that have been combined with some crazy imperfect calibers, right. etc. Um, so this is this is already turning out to be one of the most unique hordes <laughs> that, that we've ever created. Yeah, and, uh, this is just here out in the office, and I'll have people walk by and just like I'll hear people laughing as they look at these things because mm -hmm. um, it is ridiculous. This is one of the most. Uh, this is the most. I think variety in any batch we've had so far i think the more i the more we make these the more new elements and new designs get incorporated into the mix um so this one's been really really fun and, and again these are these are all um as being test prints or misprints even um we'll we'll print on them as on many different surfaces they kind of almost function as a little bit of a time capsule right um, yeah exactly into the into the past uh few months or years even of uh, printing here at Brickmania and different product development. Um, so even just from that side alone, I think it, they're, they're interesting in their own right. So they've been, uh, they've been fun to put together. They're fun to kind of imagine little backstories. Um, yeah, I guess they're just little, little pieces of uh, Brickmania history. Yeah, they're, they're really, really cool. We got some specific ones we want to show off, but before that, I just want to remind everybody again, remember, this is how it works this weekend. When you spend 100 bucks, you get one free. It's limit one per customer. This is kind of the warm up. Uh, to what we've got planned for Black Friday, so stay tuned for details in that regard. But otherwise, if you want to get your hand on your first rando to start off your 2020 collection, you can go ahead and take advantage of this. Um, so let's take a look at some of these and uh, and see what uh, what you just might yeah, possibly get your hands on. I pulled out a few from the collection. Um, this is cool. I, I like that 3D printed um, cap, um, the Pelotka with the uh, the female sniper hair on that one that mm -hmm. debuted in uh, Lady for Lady Death, correct? correct? Um, and then custom printed sniper rifle, and then you have different. Uh, let's take that hair piece off and see what we got under. Oh, good clutch, good clutch. Come on. Okay, yes. Um, so <laughs> I don't even know what's going on here. Some <laughs> holding, holding their breath, I guess. Yeah, and right. different you got faces. Normal face and holding breath. Face yeah. And, and whatever you're looking for. Um. Yeah. Another guy. This dude's all. This dude's blue. I guess transparent blue head. I'm throwing in a, a nice little screw into this into this mix. Maybe there'll be some more stuff. Uh, strewn about once we get this uh, closer to uh, drop, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's another avenue for dropping in perfect calibers um, and some different uh, test print sprues from Brick Arms. Even um, whenever I'm making these, so they're random pieces, but sometimes I am trying to color coordinate a little bit. Yeah, I guess right. there, there's, some, there's some cool, there's some subtle nuances some, in the of a rando. So yeah, I, the whole time there's this whatever made up backstory going through. Uh, mm -hmm my head when I'm making these. Dylan, you helped out quite a bit for this batch, probably actually more than I put together, but <laughs> um, yeah, so that was cool. It was a little bit, of, it was a team effort for sure uh, this time around. Um, so big thanks to, for, to, to you, Dylan, and, and others who helped out with this one. Um, but uh, when it comes time to, um, I guess, release these, these will come numbered and with signed cards. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're continuing on with horde number... I believe it's six, six? Five, five or six, one of those two. <laughs> it's hard for me to remember. Um, sometimes. we're continuing on with this. So this is the 2020 horde. Exactly. Um, and so we're continuing on from this, so this spring we had a release. So it's a continuation from that. I think I was at mm -hmm. number 300. Yeah. So now like I'm continuing, now I'm continuing on from that point. Um, 
Well, and, and the, the the future probably will not be that we do randos in the in the spring. I think that was probably pretty unique. They'll probably stay around the, the fall and holiday season uh, for the futures because we got to be able to build up enough supply of cool stuff yeah. to make sure that we can make a lot of them. You don't want to have like five cool randos and then a bunch of ones we don't want to show you. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. The, each one comes with something that, uh, that you're going to be thrilled to get. This one's kind of funny. So this muzzle brake head that we've uh, we've been throwing this guy into different batches. So this is one of our I think this is our first attempt, right, at 3D printing. Um, kind of crude by today's standards. Um, but, I mean, this was printed on either a camera guy or my uh, 3D printer, just right at our desks, mm -hmm. um, using sort of this simulated wood uh, filament. Um, this one's actually pretty clean compared to some of the other ones that we made. <laughs> um, but it, it's funny, it, it, you know, after we started making nicer and nicer muzzle brakes, these ones started to look worse and worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... You know, they're just not as common anymore, but now looking back, it, it is a clear starting point right. from uh, this whole 3D printing venture. And, um, you know, this um, this umbrella, that's actually the, the antenna from the uh, Lunar Rover, right? Yeah, right? right. So that's 3D printed. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of see the two different, two completely different generations of 3D printing here in like one figure. So. And that's yeah, kind of what you were talking about being a timeline, and you can really see the evolution of not only your artwork on minifigs, but also some of the stuff that we create to go with them. Uh, that's a, that's a pretty cool thing to see. And then, like you were talking about with the perfect calibers too, there's there's generations of perfect calibers mixed. Yeah, into this seriously. Thing. And even just, I mean, this this uh, this perfect caliber here. I mean, I don't know if they their primer let layers got turned on or wrong or. Mm -hmm. You'll see just different test prints on some of these I perfect caliber. Those, 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 those bright <laughs> ones are so much. Different. So yeah, maybe they're just testing out print areas, um, stuff like that. There are some stuff that the registration may be a little off, but you know, if they're cool enough, then that's another cool one. The snow panel on, yep. the, on the Mosin Degan. And how well that glare is working out for you. <laughs> there's just there's there's obviously too many to go over here, but. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah, I guess stay tuned. We'll we'll continually be cranking out more and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're really trying to work up to, to having a lot available for that for that Black Friday release. But we wanted to give people an early shot. Uh, so so like we were saying, if uh, you spend a hundred bucks or more, you get a free one included with your order. Uh, that that's the same that goes with these stores as well. So make sure to take advantage of that. Otherwise, coming up, uh, we'll we'll do some more videos once we have some more together. Landon will keep posting pictures uh, of cool ones on his Instagram. So make sure to tune in there. What do you think? Head back to the studio. Let's do it. Okay. All right, so also exciting this Friday, it is the long-awaited return of the Brickmania Mystery Crates. And this is uh, level number one. This is the resupply level. There are going to be five different variations of this beautifully redacted Mystery Crate. So the fun of it is, is you don't know what it is until it shows up at your door and you get to open it. We're not even really going to show off the packaging. As you can see from the website, there's no information on what is in there. You just know that it is a bunch of awesomeness. So we're going to do them at various levels. Um, from here on out, each Friday, they're going to be releasing, kind of just increasing in value and exclusivity. Uh, so that is going to be the plan heading forward for the next five weeks? Yeah, it's been It's weeks. been uh, quite the undertaking. There's mm. uh, more artwork than I've Eh, I won't say much more. It is. It is I've done uh, a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it has been, been very, very secretive, but it has been something that I think everyone has kind of yeah. It's like we're showing off all the stuff we are doing, and we want so badly to be able to show off yes. this kind of stuff, but that's not yeah. how it works. It's cool seeing the different models that are, mm -hmm. uh, or whatever it might be in these. Right. It depends. You'll have to see each week, but it'll be a lot of fun. And then obviously, um, when we send them out to you guys, we want you to share them on social media, show off what you got, show off your haul. Uh, because there's five different variations of this, there will be a limit of five. Um, there's no guarantee that you'll get all five variations if you buy five, but we're really going to try to make sure that you do if you if you do decide to do that. Um, so go ahead and, and pick those up now. They're sure to go fast. And then remember next Friday, uh, we, we kick it up another notch again. So these are going to be really, really cool. We also have two exclusive figures coming out. Well, you know, Exclusive for now, limited limited amounts. Yes, but we will. They're not going to retire or anything. They'll come back hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, how popular they are. But they look awesome. Thank you. Um, a dual release, which means another artwork intensive. Yes. Couple of weeks back. Yeah, it's uh, we're hitting Great War Month mm -hmm. real hard. Um, exactly. Some of uh, some of the more fun artwork I think that uh, I've had uh, have had uh, the pleasure to put together. So. You want to go over these? Yeah, let's dive let's into them, man. Which one? Do you want to hear about the Devil Dog or World War One mm. Russian infantry first? 
Um, well, let's start with the bagged fig and then go to the clamshell fig. Which one was the bagged one? Oh. The, uh, the World War One. Yeah, uh, um, Russian. yeah, right, Russian. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Bagged. Okay, so this is kind of an army builder figure is how we sort of initially approach mm -hmm. this. Um, it might have snowballed and now it's like really, it, it's super awesome. Oh. Um, this artwork is, uh, it's uh, full 360 printing. Um, and then that helmet, so this is interesting. So it's a French Adrian helmet. Uh, at the start of World War uh, One. Russians didn't really have their own um, helmet, at least not in like army numbers. So they were um, buying from French actually. And uh, they had it kind of painted their own color. Real life, it's a bit more mustardy than this, but olive drab is pretty close. Okay. Um, and then we had that really beautiful texture printed. Um, it's that Russian Imperial Eagle mm -hmm. on that uh, on that helmet. Uh, brand new artwork all over this guy. New backpack, new uh, entrenching tool, new grenade, um, and then of course there's some color shifting going on with that great coat. Um, one of the more clean looking World War One Russian. Um, uh, infantries that, that you can really get. I mean, there isn't really a ton out there, but um, my last one was very simple, um, and this is just more than a generational leap forward from that. So oh, very, very cool. That was fun project um, mm -hmm. to work on. What uh, what brick arms am I pairing with that guy? <sighs> You're putting me on the spot. Uh, Mo uh, Mosin? I guess mm -hmm. just a Mosin. Been know? around for a while. Yeah. Pretty, pretty tried this and true rifle. Pro it's probably an early, I think it's an earlier version than the World War II version, mm -hmm. but in brick arms form, it's probably the same thing. Yeah, uh, sure. If I'm wrong on that, correct me. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, next up, we have the World War I Devil Dogs. Yeah, this is also so a really, is, really cool looking the United figure. States Marines during World War I, mm -hmm. and this would be at Bellow Wood, is the uh, the Battle of Bellow Wood where these guys, uh, it, it, you gotta read about it. Pull up a wiki, get a book, you know. Yeah, sure. Educate yourselves. Educate it makes yourself. it fun. It's a cool. It's a cool little battle there. Plus mock ideas, right? That's yeah. half the fun of research. Just being Seriously. able to find stuff like that. You read some of the details, and then you get to go build them. Um, so again, this is um, sort of a similar um, aesthetic going on here. Full text, full 360 printing on this guy, um, and then that really nice uh, color shifting. I, I think I'm, I'm incredibly happy with how this color shifting turned yeah. out. Um, and so the, the the Marines, pretty much the same uniform as the Army at the time. Mm -hmm. From what I could tell, but their uniform, the material, the, the color, uh, it seemed like they tried to keep that a little bit more green looking, mm -hmm. just to kind of set themselves apart. Uh, and then they, on the, uh, again, we didn't have our own helmet at the time, so we were buying helmets from the British, and so it's the Brody helmet, and then there's um, kind of a non, this, this, this isn't uh, an issue, um, this, the helmets aren't issued with this um, anchor, or eagle globe and anchor um, pin. Mm -hmm. But they add that, you would see it occasionally, them adding that in the field, again, just to kind of set them sure. apart. So. Nice, a, a cool distinction. Well, yeah, those are the uh, the two standalone figs. Um, there'll be probably a, a 10 figure limit on each of them, I believe. Yeah, I, I can see this Marine, uh, and, and hopefully the Russian, going really fast. Mm -hmm. um, I think we were planning on a bigger quantity, sure. uh, just given print time. Um, We'll see what we yeah. can bring we'll see. back. We're yeah, going to try to right. make as many as possible, but mm -hmm. we'll see. So do not delay on these ones. Yes, so, right. Because we again, we don't really know when they're going to come back. It's mm -hmm. you know, it's usually more than a month or so before we see some of these uh, non mini figures of the months come through. Yeah, so, right. We're not we're not uh, taking them off the table, but it's something that uh, it takes a while for production to roll over, especially around the holidays when we want to get a lot of cool stuff back in action. Um, I know Dan talked a little bit about the Bantic during our check-in. Can you go over that figure? Sure, sure. Uh, real quick, because that is a pretty pretty sweet fig to have oh, included with. Oh, don't you just hate the, it when the seat sticks to your legs when you're trying to get out of a vehicle? Mm, yeah, it happens to um, me and my Bantic on the way to work all the time. Every single time. So let's see. This guy, we got dual uh, Papa Shop pouches. Um, on the front of that belt there. And of course, that's what's really cool about this kit is it comes with this uh, perfect caliber yeah. GPSH. So you can get, it's kind of just like an all in one. Sorry, I'll get my hands out of here. Ah. There we go, okay. Kind of an all in one mm -hmm. package right there. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, um, what's it, Pilotka? Uh, the pilot cap? Yes, correct. Uh, side cap. Well then, nice, yeah. I, I, doubt, I doubt my pronunciation was. Sounded perfect. No, I don't know. Looks close enough to way Thank, yeah. the way you read it. Um, <laughs> but uh, so it's 3D printed in house, designed in house, pr um, 3D printed in house, and UV printed in house. So it's it's just kind of a one stop shop right here with this. Just serious figure. premium figure to come with to come with the, yeah. uh, the and he, vehicle. And he's like a simple driver, but it's it's uh, I I like that we're bringing it to this level. So. Yeah.
Absolutely, yeah. a really cool, a really cool inclusion. That and perfect I, caliber yeah. really ties it together. And I like this, this little uh, the bandic, right? Mm -hmm. What's it called? Bantic. Bantic is what, what it looks I hadn't like. Really to me. heard much about it before, but mm -hmm. it seems like the the Soviets liked it quite a bit. Yeah, right. It was kind of, kind of a cool story, like like Dan was going over in his little bit. You know, it was a, a predecessor to the mass produced Jeep. Yeah. Um, basically, the long and short of it was that this company they didn't trust the production capabilities of it to be able to make enough to. Uh, to have it be the service vehicle, sure. but the amount that we sent to the uh, to the British and Russians, the Russians especially, really uh, really favored it. So a cool little kit, something that uh, be a fun little holiday price point and uh, and awesome to have. And then obviously the SU twenty seven, the bright blue jet. Look at this beautiful thing. So remember, it does come with uh, some additional parts, including this cool like after thruster thing, so that you can stand it up. Um, I'm not going to attempt that here. We'll have Dan do it in the designer's desk or something, but. Uh, there you have it, the SU-27. I still think there's a couple of these online. This was one that even when we released it, we didn't quite know how exclusive it was going to be. Um, but man, like it is going to be a long, long time before we're able to get something like this back in stock. And so uh, we props to all the people who have gotten theirs already because this thing is an absolute beauty. It's a very, very unique model. Um, but we've got some stuff, you know, F-22, um, CH-53, some of those other bigger models that we want to bring back, you know, even even already in next year is what we're looking at, um, and so considering this is is still in stock, bringing something like this back would be far out. It's cool seeing um, you know customers who traditionally maybe didn't weren't really into aircraft or weren't really into Russian stuff mm -hmm. um, make the jump to this because this is yeah. one of the more gorgeous jet models just out there. So, no, yeah, I agree. Um, that camouflage is unreal and uh, very nice sculpting all over, you know? Yeah, really, and considering how quickly it came together, um, it was just, it's very, very well designed, super sturdy. It's a fun one-hand swoosh, if you if you dare, <laughs> after you're done building it, um, but definitely worth it. Make sure to check out the designer's desk. I hope we have that up this weekend. This guy will go over the figure. Dan will talk about the build a little bit, um, and that, that should be really cool. But the SU-27 is release week. Um, other than that, a couple of mentions. Uh, so you guys hopefully have noticed in our Instagram story, we have a uh, micro brick battle auction going on on eBay right now that uh, uh, someone was kind enough to set up for us uh, with some really, really cool battle packs uh, from way back when, uh, really from all over the place. Um, all proceeds from that are going to the Wounded Warrior fundraiser. So please, please, please go bid. Get yourself some cool micro brick battle tanks uh, to use with the new rules and fun stuff coming to microbrickbattle.com. Uh, and then also do some good in the Wounded Warrior projects. Um, Veterans Day sale, remember that kicks up next week on the 4th through the 11th, 15% off in our stores and online. So take advantage of that. We'll release that promo code on Wednesday. Um, Make sure to use those hashtags, Red October Bricks, for a couple more days, and then Great War Bricks, because we're getting into that, those vibes. Great War vibes. Lando's Randos. Lando's Randos. Get one free this weekend when you spend 100 bucks, like we went over in the, in the check-in, uh, and then get ready for that Black Friday drop. Oh, yeah. Should be pretty exciting. I think we'll uh, probably make a few more between now and then. Yeah, we hope so. We'll, we'll let you know what the numbers will be come then. Um, but we'll make as many as we can. They are going to be kind of the unofficial minifigure of the month because of the amount of time and effort you have to put into assembling them all. <laughs> I think uh, I had a little bit of help this time, so it's cool. Uh, it has to be a little bit of a team effort when you're doing that kind of quantities, but don't worry, they're all approved, approved. by Lando. Still, still the same signature, no one's gonna Looking rob you over from all of them. Right, exactly. <sighs> Tossing out the uh, garbage camera guy's catastrophes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, he made one that was, well, we'll see. Maybe someone will get it and love it. No. They won't even know. I threw it away. <laughs> okay, I think that has to, uh, that is all I got to say for this Friday sit rep. Anything else you want to add? Uh, nothing. All right, cool. We'll catch you next time.